Newbury, I've been told it's getting quite full, so you want to come now? Well, I'm pretty pleased with myself because I actually remember to do something. <laughs> and you've seen this leaflet out on the table, so this is on the day scheme on the 20th. Um, nice to you look around the desk, it's nice place to go. Good, good coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> Honour of that. So today, this is our agenda. Uh, I've just found out my kitty is uh, is having operations, so I'll be wrapping that up really fairly uh, quickly and disappearing from the British Army. Uh, you won't be alright when you run on the team. Four. Well, you can. <laughs> uh, if you do, then this room is booked to four. <laughs> we have got on, we have got on to the fire, don't we? There's a pub down the road. Yeah, 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 we might have a read there. But anyway, I need to rush on. My name is you, sir. for coming first of all and giving me opportunity uh, to present here. Um, myself is Mr. Kekunda, I'm certified as the architect and CBI as a whole very daily account. And I will uh, um, get present in the work for this year as well. Uh, today, basically, I'm going to demonstrate about test and plug process model plugins. Uh, I think this is one of the hidden feature of test and which uh, um, we are not aware really of, I think we are from my perspective, but so I thought I should give some very brief introduction about this feature. Um, so basically, we'll go to the introduction of the architecture and uh, the question of what process is running and what we'll demo, actually, there's few demos that are shared with first time examples. We can go through that and then the rest. So uh, basically, the Plugins are like just the process model sequence file, and uh, uh, at the moment it's basically for test and process test and processing in data logging. Um, so it's, it's kind of like a sequence file which test and execute during the model execution. And uh, it's basically uh, um, 
generate the test and the test program is run like HTML, HTML, or PDF. Uh, so we can customize those seeking files and make our own one with our country logo or or PDF or which one uh, which we in which we want. Um, there's some built-in test and uh, uh, plugins are, are, are available like for HTML and HTML one. Uh, but we can create our own one to extend the test and processing and data logging. So this is a, a basic architecture. We have a process model here, and then we have a model support features under the plugin system, and we are uh, the building one, the HTML one, the HTML one, the HTML one, and then we can create our own one to first and then we can process the, the test results and throw it in our way. That's the way uh, we're going to achieve what happens. So basically, uh, this is how we can make our own uh, um, process, we can create our own process plugin, model plugin is this is test and we have to configure the option in the processing and then it will come up with this window where you have to click the show more option and it will show you this hidden feature uh, that you wanted for advanced. These are the, the first uh, the built-in ones that for HTML and the data right and offline which are going to be in the stand, but we can create our own in that. These are these two things which takes you more and basic this time to have a uh, one which is shared with this time. And then I made my own one, one through the name and logo. So you can create your own one uh, and you can create the idea of all the features you have, which you can need. Um, so uh, when you click on it once, it will come on this thing where you can uh, the option work. But you will create new process model plugin and you just click in A and then it will ask for the like, name, what name you need. So you basically prefix it with the company name, the score, and uh, the, the, by default, the name like uh, the report plugin module for you have to prefix it to any name. And then you will create a, like a sequence of that date. By default, you have all these variables, whatever the name of the plugin, and it's the option, additional option, three times a week, and three times a It also supports multi, uh, like the YouTube design testing, so you can also have multi reporting, like you have the testing going at the time, but you can handle the socket, different sockets, and you can have a uh, variable for each, each unit. So, I'll go through again this thing. So, you want to configure the processing. So, if I uncheck this, you see it's, it's basically the advanced the option is here. And then you click on advanced, click up on a picture window where you can create new models. Click this, and then it will. Ask for the basically uh, all the plugins are stored in like the test and public uh, folder for the company. And then we have all the public folder. We have the basic one, which has the test and one in the mind one here. So basically, all, all the such things are displayed here. And so we just put the name to test. <coughs> So they basically take it over and as I said, maybe take you to function Now we put that to the public directory, just kind of the directory. So it's so this time for my model plugins 
and you see the sequence and this one. So it extracted like these are the subsequence I extracted automatically. You did start done on the size that we will initialize. So basically what you can do, you can make changes to the one what what kind of input you need. So you can either you can use any uh, any adapter like LabVIEW or CDR or you know, different API you can use to, to do all these all these uh, uh, processing so to add to the report. Start with this. So the first one is kind of option. There's a library that will uh, uh, library where you can verify all the V library, which is basically all by that sequence. And you can configure in uh, if you go back to configure and then do processing and you click on this. So you have like you can you, you can add uh, options like what you need where you want to say or other options like where you want to pick up some different files if you want if you are customizing the uh, in a different way. So this is this you can configure in this sub sequence configure standard option, which is here and is a VI for launch option and option I of support, which is So we are with all the options which I've shown you, and it's just uh, like you can just have the uh, API there starting model, just a model that uh, API will be like this kind of model, and then we can assign the like the property of that model to you of the VI and all these settings. So basically, you, know, you can create like a API in this time, CDI, or any other language you like, and then you can. All the API into that plugin and the subsequence, and that will basically give you test uh, uh, processing data that you want to do. So, yeah, so uh, uh, like if I show one example, like in here, you, know, you can have like subsequent for example, report part where you can assign where you want to save in which format. Uh, the, the, the file name will be like format of page, second hand, here, and then it's software will be a bit software to be able to, to handle the multi interface as well. And then you can create your own header in a way like a presentation like in your personal part number. And uh, this is the option for if you want offline processing, so if you create a PSR, PSR part for you, and then you can. You know, And similarly, and similarly, you can play footer, stages, and column headers if you want different headers. And basically, you can customize your own headers and you can create your own header and then you can give it as a plugin. So you basically, when when you make the subsequent and there's a so this is an example where they have a sequence file over where basically they are running the main subsequence and it will prompt for this type of environment you are to do cross my tab you are to do CVI and then this will copy that subsequence to the model that you want to automatically produce. So you can create another map around the on the top level to the copy or the rather copy manual. So this is a, a basic uh, a basic example uh, in this time. Okay. 
So the, the benefits are like you, you can uh, basically pick up the, the processing from like you don't need to use the uh, uh, common file to keep it, you can have your own plugin that you can modify from the uh, processing from uh, uh, a non test band plugin. Uh, and you can just more customize the coordination and data they're talking uh, without modifying the process models. Like, um, and you can have nothing to the database, you can the token by creating the code to log in data. And, uh, we, and then you can log the result data in part and go back to our performance, which are both network and processing as well. Any questions? Very quick one here. <laughs> No. Mm -hmm. Question freezer. Mm -hmm. You should tell us everything we need to know. Excellent stuff. Joe? I'll bring my hands up to the test now. It's easy. I haven't said it for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tell me people use test now. <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual. See, like, see the. Uh, so we have Mr. Roy back here sometimes. He, he would have said yes about those questions as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> there have been two of us in there. But uh, I mean, I was saying earlier that, that test stand is one of the reasons I don't do test anymore, <laughs> which is the. Um, it's a compliment to it, but it, it, it just made it. Um, Quite easy in a way to do to do quite complex test systems, and uh, so it's. Uh, I think it reaches a, a, a point though that it does get quite complex, isn't it? It's, it's, it does the easy stuff. Easy. The easy stuff, like, yeah, so it's like management. And it's, yeah, especially for the multi-unit testing, the software itself um, or, or automatically handled and tested with the We we reached the point with within our company as well, so. You know, we, we resisted it because of that, you've been pushed. And it's reached a point where you can't resist it anymore, you know, you, you have to do it. It's become the argument, the cost argument is it's not there anymore to write your own land view testing or anything. No. I don't think there's any benefit to it. No, unless you're trying to do something in a test and doesn't do. Yeah. There are cases where there are test stand doesn't do what you want, want to do in a test sequence, in which case you would you probably mold test stand to do it, but there's the sort of the argument are you spending more time and effort than you would just write in a sequence. But, yeah. I suppose the, this is yeah for the majority of them the standard test sequence applications. That's what test stand is there for. Mm -hmm. See it, 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 this is the spelling only the test processing not for Yes. So, um, like we have to extend that to override our process model from the non test and on the sequence of that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just a solution if you have like plugins like simple one for or easy layer, you know, you can't do like very tedious tasks on the test stand. Excellent. Thank you very much, sir. You got next one? Yeah. Yeah. And you got a round of applause. I'm never getting a round of applause. <laughs> 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 there was uh, two test stand presentations at the CLA summit. Yeah, that was that was an unusual thing, but it shows you sort of how integrated it's becoming there. <laughs> the whole process. I gave one of those presentations. You did? Well, quite a small part of them. <laughs> I stood there and watched one of us doing a presentation where it was only most of the mic occasionally. 
Gerberus assistant. 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 Gerberus
and you would test what you think could happen and you would document what should never happen with your certs. Yes. So they could actually, you could argue they complement more than over. Yeah, I think it probably depends on how you use them, but as long as you, you could certainly use them in that. The main place to not use them is in error handling. So, uh, as I before, if anything in your code is fine, I don't know. If you um, pop up a file dialog box and the user list is cancelled, that will generate an error in your code. That shouldn't cause an uncertainty because that's probably not a fundamental problem in your code. That's the user's done something we didn't expect in the box. Eliminate that error as well, which probably shouldn't be eliminated in your code. Invalid hardware references, network communication failures, are all things that are not necessarily going to be problems with the code, they're things that are maybe they're problems with the setup of how the application has been deployed or something. Problem with the communication. So, when I uh, originally developed and put uh, this, uh, this API online, I had a bit of a Went through a couple of different illustrations of how I work, built it, and I uh, see so yeah, I had this. This is the VI here, and uh, the uh, certain message came in and blocked the time and some information about it, and then took that message over to an engine that was keeping track of all of the insert information um, and, and, and uh, some failed passing back actions to the the BID or debug in the code to tell you if there's certain actions you're taking. So this is an example here where I was um, um, sort of starting up uh, with cert engine in here and then pre sort of pre-allocating some certs and then in the loop here I was just sort of like some some random notes just to, to demo how it works. And then I've had a report out there that every time there's a cert failure it generates a report. Say, the core stack was of its users. Basically, I pitched it on the mission, which wasn't really doing how I wanted to do things I wanted to. So, I'm just going to skip on that and I'll show you why I'm doing it. It's by no means a working, uh, working uh, fully working piece of code at the moment. It's having very much in the moment. I can't show you the actual deployment thing. So, I've got a uh, Tools, run a certain display option there. I'll add another thing to just allow you to, that's just going to launch this window. Unfortunately, there's a bug in it that seems to crash and lag with So, that's <laughs> um, so this is my development flow. So, this is uh, just a bit of example of demo code. Each of these uh, sub yards here is a insert statement. What I've done is I just create a new constant. So I just create a quick drop shortcut that I can go to quick drop and then it brings up the dialog box where I can say this is going to be called C slide. And then it's a quick drop. The eye detects what type of uh, wire it is. So, for uh, an eye test, it knows I can do all these different tests. I've got a different bunch of tests for strings, levels of the same test. These are the only four data types I support at the moment. I could expand it to other data types if I wanted to, but it's easier just to say. There's a higher quality of things for the moment. The file is basically saying, capacity not equal to. 35. Uh, I can put in a comment there, such as uh, so. and then decide what I want to happen if it fails. So I say pause. Hit OK. Oops. I say it's not perfect, but I've seen issues. And then that just generates that PI. Which is got, which is basically got a bit of scripting inside there to put all the information about the configuration. So it's given the 
script of the name there, the assert, uh, which is the data type. Um, I've got my comparison value, I've got an evaluation string, description in there. Oh, sorry, comment. The, the di difference between the description and comments is the description is it's added into the you know, description there, so it's not that in the context tell. And then if I run the code, and run my run, then the C service. Uh, And then uh, comment and then uh, comment gets inside the information. So, this is based on my little user interface that I made up, which logs all that information. Um, I've put in some new features in here, it's definitely not the new features yet, so I can toggle whether they're whether in particular certs kind of ignored or not by just clicking on. So if I click on double test so that you can see that the number there is no longer updated and the timestamps not dancing really um, still running here and still going over still executing that assert statement but inside the log still it's basically that value there will be false for that assert so yeah, that's kind of a bit of an update of what I've been working on. Um, in a sense, completely, but I wouldn't say completely. Um, but there are certainly some bugs. Um, I've been trying to make this more efficient because I had a lot of problems where. If I said I was <coughs> speed this up to 100 milliseconds upload rate, this is on a one second upload rate by default. I can change that to 100 milliseconds. Uh, yeah. I was having problems where the UI would just get terribly behind, and if I changed it, if I sort of stopped my uh, my application there, there'd be a big backlog of 10 seconds where I'd just just run. All of the user events to be executed up, which is not good at all. And I realized that that was a couple of uh, Mac. I realized that the way that I was updating this table was really inefficient. I tried to find a different way and increase the efficiency by about quite a few times. So that seems to have solved that issue. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of what we're working on. But the one other thing to show is. So this is what the way that I've been uh, getting feedback from a few uh, people in the community, James and Steve, you guys, this is what I've been. And I've reached the num maximum number of people allowed on free bit projects at the time. Um, mm -hmm. And I've got less less people to submit issues here, which I've been um, taking on so I mean, it's dangerous. That's kind of what I've been working on. Any questions or anything anyone wants to show? Or wants me to show, I should say. So you could, with your example, you know, you wire a constant. Um, yeah. So if you made that out of control and set it to 35, you actually see yes. raw interaction. So <laughs> <laughs> So that's quite handy, I reckon. <laughs> I was going to say, what does it do to the best of trade execution tool? Ah, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it helps. <laughs> I, I would say that because it helps a lot. What the best of trade? Yeah, I, I would think a lot of these things you, you have to use one at a time, as it were. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But when it's something like that, you can do it. You can do it. Generate a user base of any kind. I don't know, I can't remember how much information you can put along with it. But you could have that as an unsynchronous API potentially. Which says if there's an assert, just generate something into that trace lock. 
Yeah, so I in the in the That's why I use Irish plans these days, the best I've tried. Yeah. Keep it bright. Yeah. I think it's And this is a good software engineering tool, you'll see other languages you use. And the solutions like this. And so it's in that book, Code Complete, which is so <laughs> software engineering best practices. Everyone should read it. It is it's brilliant. Brilliant. It is brilliant. It's very good book. Not the most interesting that time ever. <laughs> I think I found books like that, I think we've never planned to read them end to end. Uh, think, oh, well, they're a bit interesting there in London this week, I'll go and dig through that. That's, that's how I'm, I've probably made it through a lot of that book yeah. now, but I'm still not going to end to end. He does videos, uh, mm -hmm. Steve Connell does constructs yeah. with an X, who look at that, he does all, all, all about, mostly about project management. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. really very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knows his stuff. Yeah. So does that make sense at all? Any questions about that too? So my plan is to carry on doing more development with uh, the help of um, various people that sign up to the instances. At some point I'm going to try and release it into the community and just make it generally available and hopefully that one will be able to go through the I'm sure so is, 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 has it got an internal conditional disable on that too? Or, is, or do you yes. have to wrap it on as a conditional disable? That's a good question. So the way that the code is compiled out is inside this log circle, there's two conditional disable structures. First is runtime engine, and then the phone uh, uses in runtime engine, because Excuse me, don't want to be doing it. And then I've got this assert API equals on tag, so I can also enable that I'm not scary. And then it's an assert API to on as a condition. So if I just set that to half or to be tilted together or whatever, then it just completely the same to all the asserts in my application. And I can just put the internet in this. I think there's pretty little overhead to including this in some way, but that was just good for the music. Topic down, you need, when you're four or five inches, generally, where this is dead useful, you need to be able to switch it out and switch it back in. I think I could see a case where you might want in the runtime engine while you're still testing. Yeah. It might be worth having like a, an end condition on that with another. A certain API runtime yeah. potentially. Because you can have it in debug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Debug. Like, uh, yeah, you know, you've got a problem only getting these cool things. Might be nice. That's true. It's the one I'm guessing at project lines or something like that. Yeah, maybe that's good. Yeah, yeah. I could see a use case for that. Speaking to, so, I'm speaking to Richard Thomas about his, his thoughts. You want to, you don't want to have a search in the code during, only during development of your that module. So if you were developing an application, you know, you can activate whatever large framework you want to use. You build your kind of actor or whatever it is that has some functionality, get that working, and then you build 15 or 20 other actors for your application, all have very long sort of isolated bits of functionality. They all work great in isolation, but then when you come to integrate them together, 
could be six months down the line or something, and you've got how that first function works. And then something in the interaction between them makes one of these asserts flag up. Then you're going to have forgotten about that initial piece of code, but the asserts are going to still be there and check the code in front of And still a valuable thing to do with me, and just compile them all out and support the end. One thing just thinking of here, which would be useful, is if you could just blast it out as a, a JSON app in UDP, it would be useful for real time. Mm -hmm. So you just write very easily a little UDP snippet, then you, yeah. you, you then have, excuse me, I'm chucking the certs out. Put the certs onto a real time control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have been wondering how to support <laughs> the but well, I, I do say it's similar with sort of error tracking, so I you know, people call my errors out of uh, the UDP. Yeah, that works. That's really been very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Kind of using for everything. Mm -hmm. Not just <laughs> errors, but um, <laughs> but that would be a similar be useful. You know, that would be yeah. Yeah. an unsent Yes. Yeah, and you can have unsent list, yeah. So throw another concept into that. So I've had an exact issue bug at the minute in a real-time project, which certs would be kind of a thing to try and catch, um, where once every few days, uh, function through an NAN number. And in that case, UDP wouldn't work, because I wanted to run without anything. So I wanted to log that to a file. Um, and in my case, the thing I found really useful is I wrote a little VI that basically caches the last 10 chunks of data that's, that's processing and then dumps that into a file as well, which obviously you can do. Um, but well, I'm I'm just thinking that having yeah. the ability to like plug that into whichever way you want to do it's on an assert, do this. Um, and then, yeah, you can have a standard one that sits over the network or drops into files. And, uh, yeah. That's probably it, right? So, for our, uh, for our port, we'll yeah. do, do you? Yeah. yeah. So log in a bit of report, and then you, you, know, if you limit it, limit it to that, and just say that's that's what you get. <laughs> you know, because you can do anything you want with QTT. You can just uh, um, you know, log it out of the effect, but of course it's a network, and more it's isolated. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I think it's mm. I haven't tried it at all on real time system. <laughs> so I should be. I can't see any reason why it would cause problems. No, I, I would need to change bits of it. Then. Couldn't have bought on it. Mm -hmm. You'd have to change some of the handling, I guess. Yeah, we need to change how I'm, what I'm doing with the information. You're running interactively, I suppose that still makes sense. <laughs> yes. Yes, I mean, it's a, it's a grown up option, but it is an option. If you want to avoid it, yeah. you avoid it. Why limit it? Yeah. It may not be advisable, but that's, <laughs> you know. Well, I'm not quite going on that game. But there's an argument you want it to do something drastic because otherwise it's too easy to ignore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's so in from what I asked you, you have a safe exit rather than a tour. Yeah. You, 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 you trigger the safe exit. Yeah. Which is the way it should be. Cool. Okay. I like it. Yes. Still like it. <laughs> right, food is out there. Uh, if we can change over, if anyone wants some food, like I do. Now's a good time. So we, can... we can eat and then talk about complexity. It's <laughs> <laughs> a discussion rather than a presentation. <laughs>